everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's interview. My name is Jacine Duncan Malcolm. Today we're going to be talking about a very exciting opportunity coming up for young people in the Caribbean community. The American Caribbean Maritime Foundation, ACMF, in association with the Caribbean Association of National Training Authorities, CANTA, and the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors will launch the Maritime Link Up Beyond Borders webinar on the 19th of August. So, of course, today I have a very special guest to tell us more about this initiative. Her, our guest is none other than Dr. Janine Brown Metzger, President of the ACMF. Thank you so much for sharing with us virtually, Dr. Metzger. It is my pleasure to be with you, Jocene. All right, well, let's jump straight into it. Um, tell me about this Maritime Link Up webinar series. What is it? Quite simply put, it is a webinar to sensitize our Caribbean youth about this amazing sector called the maritime sector. I don't know if your listeners realize that shipping and logistics is one of the top largest industries in the world. The number one is tourism, of which cruise is a part of that. But the world was came together essentially because of the ability of countries to trade. And this has been going on since time immemorial. So this sector really is a sector that is little known, but has such a critical uh, connection with each of our lives in a very, very personal way. So tell me about the actual webinar. Like what is it? What's, what's the purpose of it? Well, as I said, the purpose is to sensitize our Caribbean youth so they can look at this sector in terms of opportunities, job opportunities, and to build careers. It right. is a five-part series that is being led by some of the top brass in the maritime sector, CEOs of some of the biggest companies in the trade, whether it's on the cargo side or the cruise side. For example, we have um, Michael Bailey, who is the president and CEO of Royal Caribbean, the third largest cruise line in the world, who is leading a seminar. We have Rick Morell, the chairman, actually retired chairman of Tropical Shipping. If you're in the Caribbean, which you are, and you go to your port, you can't help but see tropical containers. Right. They're the biggest in the region. The chairman of the board is going to be there talking with you. Uh, we also have um, Rick Sasso, who is the chairman of MSC Cruises, the fourth largest cruise line in the world. In addition, we have a shipping uh, association people such as Juan Carlos Croston, who is Panamanian and president of the Caribbean Shipping Association. So we have pulled together top brass who are dedicated to and are very committed to the Caribbean, not only in terms of their business, but in terms of ensuring that their companies give back to the region. These are donors to the foundation and who enable us to be able to sponsor scholarships. So this seminar really is making sure that Caribbean youth has all the information they need to understand opportunities in the maritime sector. And we end with a scholarship. We select oh. from the attendees a full <laughs> tuition scholarship, yes, to attend either the Caribbean Maritime University, and I'll tell you about the university in a moment, right. or the University of Trinidad and Tobago, or okay, uh, I think those are the two options. get to that, I want us to go back a little bit to the focus of the webinars. And I'm actually very excited to talk about this scholarship because, you know, I think that it's, it's important for us to provide opportunities for our young people um, in, a, in a tangible way. And this is one way that is very tangible and is going to be very useful. But I wanted to go back to the focus of the webinars because I noticed that you're using a theme connecting Caribbean youth with educational and professional opportunities in the blue economy. And I wanted to get some, some idea from you why you chose that theme. And also, for those who don't know, what is the blue economy? 
Well, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to thank the Honorable Kirk Humphrey, who is, as you know, Barbados Minister of Maritime and the Blue Economy. I can say unequivocally that the Honorable Minister is really a driver of the blue economy in the region. This is a, a, a context in which uh, we'll be able to bring our young people uh, along so that they can understand that in addition to themselves, in addition to to themselves as people, our biggest resources is our environment. And so that when ships are coming to port, whether it's through tourism or to bring cargo, whether it's the utilization of energy, hopefully we'll move to, to, to away from fossil fuels to alternative energy, that it is critically important that we protect our environment. People get on ships, cruise ships and, you know, airplanes to visit the region. Why? To meet our people and to enjoy our environment. So if we are not protecting our people and pro educating our people and protecting our environment, we are doomed to just disappear. So this webinar series is highlight how important our economy, rather the blue economy, is to the livelihood of our region and what are the opportunities in this blue economy. The blue economy is a vast, you're talking about now, in fact, it, 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 there's the blue economy, the green economy, and the orange economy. Let's just focus on, I know. I want you to explain, you know, what, what, there are so many different, you know, terms that people use, and especially economic terms. A lot of persons may not be very familiar with some of them. So, you know, an explanation of what the blue economy is can, can be quite helpful. Absolutely. And I'll certainly defer to the Honorable Minister, who is really an expert in this. However, just simply put, the blue economy is the ability to develop economically, leveraging and utilizing the environment associated with marine life, whether it's our seas okay. and our rivers. The green economy would have be much, uh, would include um, energy, uh, whether it's wind, fossil fuels, or other types of resources. But the blue, blue economy is really very focused on maritime resources, maritime assets, developing our economy, growth, and industry within that, within that uh, context while protecting and preserving our environment. Okay. All right. So let's talk about who can actually participate. I know you have specific dates for them, so I guess you can go into those details. When are they going to happen and who can actually participate? We launch uh, in a week's time, actually on August 19th, where we will be presenting on Crossroads to the World, the Caribbean Maritime Tradition in Global Shipping. Now, you know, we are as a, as a collection of states, only 45 million people with relatively small economy. But we have a saying in Jamaica, Jacine, and you know it, we little but with Kalawa. <laughs> Container shipping is, the, is many be, believe that container shipping is the driver for globalization. Now here, put this together, connect the dots. Container okay. shipping is the driver of globalization, the ability to really connect our countries and trade in an efficient manner. And we in the Caribbean are a big part of that innovation. I bet a lot of people don't know that. So we are, as you know, the Caribbean Sea is so critical to global trade, period. That I think sometimes you just take it for granted. But I digress, I, or maybe I just go on too much because this is a passion of mine. So that is the first one on August 19. And then okay. on uh, the next one will be uh, September 9th, 9th. And all of them begin, by the way, at 10 to 11 EC time. EC time. Right. And the next one with what's in a box, the development of container shipping and its impact on the Caribbean. And I went into a little about that. And the following will be September 23rd. Uh, that will be Phoenix Rising, the cruise industry's wow. importance and potential for the Caribbean. The and this is going to be important right now, especially coming out of this pandemic and, you know, the, our recovery process. So I, exactly. I'm very interested to see how this one goes. Absolutely. And then after that will be October 7th, 
our future, our seas, Caribbean environmental issues, regulation and compliance. The focus there will be on the regulations that are global regulations that the Caribbean and the rest of the world subscribe to to ensure that our environment, our waterways are protected. In other words, these are the regulations by which all who use the seas, whether it's cargo ships, cruise ships, tugboats, whoever, you, hotels <laughs> use the seas, protect them based on these global regulations. And then the final one is October 21st, uh, Gangway to the World, Caribbean Maritime Training Technology and Opportunities for You. So we end with a bang. After we've talked about all of this fabulous information and so on, where do you fit in now, young uh, Caribbean person? Mm -hmm. What are the job opportunities for you? What training must you have to enter this incredible field? The last thing I will say in terms of the content is that the maritime sector is a global sector. When you are trained in this sector, and that's not the case for many uh, trainings, when you're trained in this sector, you can work anywhere in the world. Let's just use a medical doctor. You are trained, you go to you or wherever else in the Caribbean to study medicine. When you come to America, you can't just jump into the hospital and work. You have to get some special certification. Yes. Okay. Maritime, not true. These are global degrees. And I mentioned the Caribbean Maritime University before. The Caribbean Maritime University is one of the few universities in the Western Hemisphere with a 9,001 uh, ISO qualification. These are global standards by which training in the, any particular field have to comply. And unless you have that 9,001 9, uh, ISO certification, you can train, but your people can't necessarily move right into a global job. We have that university in the Caribbean and people don't even fully understand what it is about. Wow. So speaking of qualifications, when persons attend this webinar, is there a certification that they get at the end? What they get is the knowledge and the information. And what they get is a, an opportunity to... Uh, be selected full tuition scholarships so they can begin their journey in this space. Okay, that sounds good actually. I mean, it's always good to get some valuable information so that you can move forward. Um, again, I, I want to just get, get from you who can actually join the webinars and you know how can they join? Absolutely. Um, they can, there is a, a flyer circulating with a registration button. You can only attend if you register in advance. So I urge all young people, even if they think they have decided on a field, to give this, and give themselves the opportunity to listen in and to hear what is going on in the sector. So this flyer will have the registration button uh, and you'll be able to go on and you know, register. It is free, there's no cost. It is also open to educators and anybody else who's interested. I think it's also important that our educators be educated about this sector as well. So, that so there is better. actually no age limit then? There is really no age limit. And there's no, there is no uh, professional limit. You can be an educator, you can be a plumber, that's, you can that's be anything. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't make this point in terms of training. I think there is a misperception about the maritime space that all you do is that you get on the ship and you serve a bunch of tourists, you know, <laughs> food. Or <laughs> if you're on the cargo ship, you are doing, you know, uh, Meaning labor. Let me just disabuse your list. You ever hear about maritime law? Okay. You ever hear about maritime engineering? You ever hear about stevedoring? Oh, okay. these are top professional positions. Captains okay. of ships, engineering degrees, degrees in logistics, which means that if you, you can do it in maritime or you can do it in the airspace. These are global international degrees it's not Perfect. about serving people although nothing is wrong with being a server on a ship don't get me wrong but that is not all that it is about yeah there are other opportunities available 
across the board, maritime and, and law, maritime good. engineering, maritime logistics, all of the breadth of, 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 of um, opportunities you can find in the maritime space. All right, um, Geneve, let's hone this in now and tell us about this scholarship opportunity. Um, is there an age limit for it? How can people apply and what does it include? We do want to uh, limit the scholarship to high school leavers or certainly college uh, age okay. students. So, I mean, if you're already in college, let's start from the basic. If you have graduated from high school and you have not yet, and you're thinking about going to college, this is an opportunity. Even if you have registered in a college and you have done a year or two years and you want to switch fields, this is an opportunity as well. So we want to limit it to the high school and to the college age student. This okay. Time. All right. And what does the scholarship include? The scholarship includes full tuition. If the student attends, and it would, the student would need to attend the Caribbean Maritime University, which is in Jamaica, or the University of Trinidad and Tobago, which obviously is in Trinidad. And Tobago. <laughs> right, exactly. And it's full tuition. Sounds good to me. And this is for anybody who wants to apply from any CARICOM member state, or is it also open to associate members? That's a good question. Why not? Absolutely. It is Wonderful. open across the region. Wonderful. Absolutely. Our facilitator, thanks to the CARICOM, has been amazing. I would not be in this interview were it not for Dr. Lorette Bristol and uh, Pat McPherson. I give kudos especially to Pat because she's the first one I spoke with and she could have shut me down, but she didn't. She said, exciting, Geneve. Let me take it to the next level. So kudos. Well done, Caricom staff. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate them. And with Dr. Bristol, they have put together a boss team that's really brought things to this point and we're getting ready to do the first one on the 19th. But to your point, absolutely open across the board, not just the CARICOM member nations. Okay, wonderful. That's great to know. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Geneve. Just to remind everyone, you can apply for the scholarship using a link. Actually, we'll have it linked below this video if you're watching on YouTube. You may also access the link on the CARICOM social media spaces, of course. And Janine, will, will you guys have it also in your social media, on your website, maybe? You are clairvoyant. Uh, yes, I was just about to say you can go to the ACMF website really easy. It's acmfdn.org. And look at the scholarship button and all the details are there. So again, that's www.acmfdn.org. Click the scholarship button and read all about it. The application is there. Everything is there. Awesome. Also, if you want to join the webinars, we will be having the details of that in the CARICOM social media spaces and on our blog, today.caricom.org. So all of the information will be available to you. All you have to do is just go to the CARICOM Facebook page or follow us on Twitter. And I got to big up also the Caribbean Association of Training, uh, Kanta the Caribbean right. National Training Association or Authority. I'm sorry, our partner in this. Big up to them as well. Thank you so much. All right. So just once again, thank you so much for sharing virtually with us. And thanks also to our viewers for watching this interview. Once again, I invite you to check out more of the Caribbean community's content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and of course, visit our blog. And thank you again, Jenny, for sharing with us. This is such an exciting opportunity. I'm really excited about it. I actually want to see these webinars. I previously didn't even have that much, you know, interest in maritime. But after talking to you, I want to know more. And I hope that our viewers want to know more too. So thanks thank again. Thank you, Justine. You're very welcome. And to you guys, see you next time.